So what I want to achieve here is show how actually, if we learn Kubernetes and use it, we can actually simplify our development. And my argument goes like this. So a lot of times people think that Kubernetes is complicated because of the installation process. So I'll often hear people say, oh, you know, we could just use a virtual machine. But actually what people don't realize is you can install Kubernetes pretty simply uh, into a virtual machine with just one node. And that installation is as simple as running this command. Okay, so what you've got then is a virtual machine that's ready for application deployment. So it's quite versatile then. You've got kind of one interface and one way of doing things like cron jobs, running your uh, Docker containers and those containers getting restarted if anything happens. Okay, so what comes along with that is with Kubernetes, you're deploying your application with YAML. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit like Docker Compose, but maybe a little bit more complicated than that. Um, my argument there would be that, okay, it's kind of what you're doing anyway, but now it's in source code. So you can actually control this in your development environment and use Git and so on to, to maintain it. So this is the first step towards um, kind of setting up your develop your production environments as code. Now, one best practice that I don't see people use so often is to set up a dev container for development environments. And the advantage that this gives is that every developer that's on the project has the same tooling. And what happens then is you think, okay, you know, we've set up our environment, we've got all the tools we need, such as Node, Python, whatever it is. Uh, maybe we need to set up a database as well. So you'll kind of jump over to using a Docker Compose configuration to set up your development environment. And what I would argue at this point is we could use something like K3D, which is a Kubernetes that just runs inside Docker, okay? Now, why would we do that? Well, we can then use pretty much the same configuration that we use for production in our development environments. And we get this kind of nice alignment where the tooling that we're using to manage what's going on in our development is the same tooling that we're using in production. And so there's, to me, there's like a reduction in complexity in that we're not shifting tool sets between development and production. <clears throat> now, if we go the Kubernetes route, I think what we can then do is we, we realize after a while we've got one tool set that we use, but we can deploy in many different ways. So we can set up a virtual machine. We can set up Kubernetes on the different clouds, either by using their provided Kubernetes or by using just a virtual machine in that cloud and we can set that up. And once we've set it up, the way we deploy our application doesn't change. So for example here, it, okay, it's a bit tongue in cheek, but um, what I'm saying is, yeah, we can use Kubernetes and we learn one tool and then we can deploy in many different ways and we could deploy it on an F16. So this is how we sort of go from cloud-based to cloud-native where our application always runs in the cloud or it can run locally or it can run in a virtual machine. And we're also cloud agnostic. So we don't tie ourselves into Amazon or anyone like that. The, the services that we need are inside the cluster. So in summary, I think it's almost a best practice that um, we can use K3s to quickly set up uh, deployment environments in an easy way. Uh, we need the development environments as code. This is a good thing. And if we've got that, I'm saying, okay, let's use K3D and then we can match our sort of development with production. And then later on, we sort of choose our deployments. So yeah, that's it really. Now, the other side of Kubernetes is just people saying, ah, you know, it's difficult to learn, but it really is kind of like just reading one book. I think if you read one Kubernetes book, you're going to get yourself 80% of the way there to what you need to know 
day to day to to use Kubernetes and anything you need above that is generally something that would have been complicated anyway and Kubernetes is actually going to help you with it. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've got more content like this. If you want to see it, then just subscribe. Thanks very much.